been working on hybrid working for the last six weeks or so and sort of forcing myself to do it. And I've learned a few tricks. So usually when you talk about hybrid warping, the loom is pulled right close to the warping board. And I'm short, so for me, reaching all the way across to here was actually causing back soreness. Mm -hmm. So I have learned that if I keep them separate, then I can actually walk in here and thread exactly as I normally would. So the first thing I'm going to do, oh, I need a little clip. why it takes me so long to do videos because I have to keep cutting and starting over again. Okay, so I just have a little clip and I'm going to clip it to my back peg because I want to measure the warp. And we're measuring for 94 inches. Do you like a little bit longer than the 94 or do you find the 94, 94 is long enough? 94 is good. 94 is good? Okay. This is the other way. And we're going to just create a path here that is about 94 inches and it doesn't matter how the path goes so that's 96 um, 96 is good <laughs> i think we're going to leave it at 96 because that just works really well i could have moved the board forward a little bit or i could have moved it back a little bit to get the 94 here but we're going to go with 96. what's really important is that it's going and not crossing over itself so for example, like if I had it over here and then I was crossing back over, okay. you can't have that. Um, there we are back at our 96 again. So I'm just gonna leave this just like this. Okay. And then I can let go here. I can put the reed in. And we're gonna put the elastic bands on. So that's gonna keep our tension nice and even. And what color is your single lines gonna be? The, the darkest blue there. This one? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna tie that on. I'm just using a normal knot. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no fancy knot here. And threading hook. Thank you. Okay. And I'm now just gonna follow here. Okay. Okay. Now when I get to the end, yes. I'm gonna wrap it around, and I'm gonna follow the path back. Once it gets to that last peg, I can just let it go. That was just the threading mm -hmm. hook. And then I can just pull this out. Okay. There are other options. You could measure a string that's your 96 inches and leave the string on there. I kind of like the tape measure because we're going to do this again. So we're going to warp about a third of it, mm -hmm. and then we're going to measure another path. And we'll have a completely different path right on top of the old one. And then we, when we've done the next third, we're going to do a third path. So what that's going to do is going to be the equivalent of using three warping pegs so that your warp is almost the same length all the way across. Because if you are on a single peg, you know how your warp is, is longer in the middle and shorter on the edges. Mm -hmm. that, that's what would happen here. We'd be shorter here, but as we went across, the warp would get longer and longer and longer. Yeah. So doing those three different pegs allows us to keep the warp more regular. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you've got to make sure that you don't mess up your uh, beginning one. peg each time you start it with your new pattern. <coughs> we move one peg. I'll, I'll try and make your attention. No, I think it's a really good question. So when I start with the second path, yes. it's a, we can ignore the old path completely. Okay. And we can cross over top of the old path mm -hmm. any way we want because it's a whole new path. Okay. And so the that's threads just, aren't that's gone. Just together. Starting new. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
So there are other options, as I said, you could have a line to measure and then you don't have to worry about the clip and the tape measure. But I think the tape measure, I love using my tape measure. Mm -hmm. And once you start using strings, then you lose length tying and the tape measure just works really well. Um, we'll come back at the next third mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll show the video people how to measure for that next third.